Actually, I'll show. And I should switch to English now because I totally forgot that we have two special guests from Vienna, from from Vienna RB Group. Uh, we were in Vienna two weeks ago for the first first for the first meetup. They were great and and uh, they they came came to Bratislava. So we will try this presentation in English. And if it will not work, we will switch to Slovak back again. Uh, so right now, Innovatrix, and they will tell us why they use Ruby on Rails. Hello, everybody. Okay, I would like to share our experience with uh, using Ruby on Rails on uh, embedded platforms. We are, uh, in this way, it's quite a non-traditional use of Ruby on Rails technology, because typically everybody deploys Ruby on Rails applications on uh, web servers, uh, and it has to scale very well and it has to be cloud ready and so on but our approach is uh, is a little bit different we want to put it on very small devices so we will talk about our experience and uh, I would like to share what what were our issues we have encountered and so on uh, our company we are from the world of uh, biometrics so let me introduce a little bit uh, and show you what we do so we are a Slovakian company, uh, head office is in uh, Bratislava, and we do fingerprint recognition software. So fingerprint recognition, as you can imagine, it's not, uh, typically it's not running on uh, servers, typically it will be running on, or very often it will be running on small processors like ARM, ARM9, ARM7, ARM M4 and so on, on embedded platforms. So, that's how we uh, we have uh, learned the embedded development. Innovatrix is uh, a company that we have 25 persons, uh, developers and technical support, sales and marketing, and we do projects basically uh, in the whole world. A lot of projects uh, is done in uh, Africa and uh, Asia. We are also we have presence in uh, in the US. Okay, let's go back to our subject now. So we have uh, three projects uh, for which we use uh, Ruby on Rails. And uh, I will uh, present them one by one. The first one is, uh, the name is Fingera. And you can go to webpage fingera.com to check it. And it's a uh, complete, it's a time and attendance uh, biometric device. So, uh, it's, uh, I, will, I will show you how the device looks like, so you can see the black box, it's, uh, it's a device with a uh, fingerprint with a touch screen and a fingerprint scanner, and of course we need it uh, to put uh, the graphical user interface on it, and we have been wondering, okay, how, how to do it uh, in the best way, at the same time we wanted to be able to interface with some web service and to have a synchronized solution uh, with more point of uh, presence and so we we have decided to use a uh, web-based technology unlike uh, let's say our competitors we are completely relying on web-based uh, technology even though we work on embedded uh, platforms so I'll go back and uh, okay, so this is how th this is the architecture on, or the whole setup. You can imagine that you need to be able to follow your time and attendance in more offices, and you would like to synchronize your information. So there will be one web service or one web server running on Heroku platform, we, and so we will have a standard Ruby on Rails ap application which will be synchronized uh, with the data which are in your lo local office where a Fingera terminal will be running. Uh, on this terminal, uh, Ruby on Rails application would not fit. Unfortunately, there is not enough RAM memory. We found out that uh, the application was extremely small. Uh, the limit is uh, 256 megabytes, which is just not enough for, uh, for browser and Ruby on Rails server. So we decided and we have invented the trick. We have put another embedded device inside this big uh, black uh, 
box. So, okay, so on, on this device, on this black box, we will, we will run browser, which is a Qt based, uh, uh, or maybe it's based on Prism. I, I don't remember now. And we have a fingerprint scanner server, which uh, will, let's say, a driver which is controlling uh, server, which is controlling fingerprint scanner. This is running in, uh, this is, was written in C, and it is interfaced uh, using uh, HTTP connection with, uh, okay, this, is, this is the inside of the box. You can see that it's pretty low level and uh, there is a lot of wires in it. And as you can see, this is our module which we add as an extension to, to the main board. It is connected via USB connection, as you can see here. And we had somehow, and web, our Ruby on Rails web server, it's Mongrel, by the way, is running on uh, this IGET, it's IGET board. So you can find more details <laughs> of the IGET. So that's where Ruby on Rails web server is running. And uh, scanner service is running, and also Firefox or this browser is running on this another board. And they are communicating together by HTTP protocol. And this was an issue for us because we had to reroute HTTP through USB. So we have been struggling <laughs> for a while, and it was not stable at the beginning, and to today it works quite okay. But I am not sure if this was the best way how to do it. Okay. So this is our web server. As you can see, it, it's uh, this, this size approximately. It has 512 5, uh, megabytes of RAM memory, and it has also a solid state disk of 5,012 uh, megabytes. The price of such a device is about uh, 100 euros. So it's not a very expensive device, and it can be connected directly to your PC. It's uh, quite user friendly. It's running Linux, and uh, we had, of course, to compile Ruby language, Ruby uh, interpreter for the device first. We found out it's not as fast as we would like to, but so then we have modified, we have tweaked, uh, modified default uh, compiler settings, and at the end, okay, now we are quite happy with the performance. And of course, we are struggling with issues like uh, the flash memory is not reliable all the time, and uh, HTTP or TCP connections through USB drops down from, from time to time, and so on. Okay, so th this is it. Okay, I have a short uh, video uh, showing now this marketing part. Okay, this this was uh, you can see our office, uh, which is in Racha, which is a part of Bratislava. And you you see again the architecture and how it looks like. <laughs> okay, we can also have an external door opener which will communicate with this uh, Ruby on Rails web service. Synchronized uh, with uh, Heroku service, so you can go, uh, you can just log in and then check your your entry in uh, through the website through, through your from your browser directly, connecting to Heroku platform. Issues we had, just maybe to give you a little bit more uh, details from developers' point of view, or big issues we had, we have been struggling with, was the stability of the platform and the memory leaks. Uh, as you can imagine, the memory usage is increasing over time, and, and this service has to run uh, 24 hours uh, per day. So, uh, okay, in fact, it does not run 24 hours per day, but at 3 a.m. In the morning, it will the service will be restarted. 
<laughs> hoping that nobody will notice. But of course, there are companies who are who are working uh, in the night mainly. So then we, we had to set it for for 12 12 uh, a.m. and so on. So we are, we are struggling with it a little bit. And uh, from once per week we do the whole restart, automatic restart of the whole of the whole system. Not only restart of the services, but we restart everything, just in case. This is something that you would not, you will not encounter, you will not experience on uh, on PC, and it was it was a big. Uh, it was a let's say it was a, we have been struggling with it at the beginning. Okay, second, uh, I would say non-typical usage of uh, Ruby and uh, Ruby on the Rails platform is uh, another product we do. It's a casino identification and client management system, and this is for a customer in uh, Slovakia, which has uh, a lot of uh, local branches where um, customers, let's say gamblers, come. <laughs> And uh, they, in fact, we are monitoring them. We are we are giving them uh, credits, and then they can get free drinks. Uh, and our system is using fingerprint recognition to recognize uh, the player. So, like this, they don't need cards. They just uh, come and put their fingers on on, uh, on the scanner, and they are automatically recognized. So again, we have Heroku platform. That's where all the data is uh, centralized. And we have branch offices. So in the branch office, we will have, uh, okay, this is the GUI, this is how it looks like. So it's, uh, it's a web-based, complete, this is a web-based application. There is a lot of JavaScript, but uh, behind it's Ruby on Rails. So in this screenshot, you can see the list of drinks uh, by touch interface. Uh, the cashier or can can select the drink, can select the you, the, the person who, who is ordering the drink, and uh, the person can pay by using his fingerprint, and his loyalty points are decreased. So this is how this is how the terminal looks like. So this is quite a high power terminal. It's a uh, it's a standard touch. Uh, it's a standard PC with uh, Intel processor, maybe two cores. So it's it's not an embedded uh, system. We have also a server where the data is uh, centralized uh, before it's being sent to Heroku Web Service. And uh, we have uh, those small uh, black devices with uh, three buttons and they are located at slot machines directly. So when, uh, when, uh, the, when a gambler wants to use it, or wants to get a loyalty point, he just puts his card inside this device and uh, we will know how long time he spent with this machine and uh, we'll get details about his game. And we will centralize it in this uh, on the server, and we will be able to analyze his games and give him more loyalty points. Okay. So basically, we have a Ruby on Rails application, and it's the same application on uh, three levels: on Heroku Cloud, on Cassi, Cassi server, and on Cassi terminal. It's basically the same application, and we are synchronizing the database using. Uh, uh, when there is, we are just synchronizing the database. Okay, and we have data collection modules, which are communicating communicating through. Um, it's not even TCP/IP. It's even lower level. It's serial link, and uh, we are just collecting uh, data from serial link and putting in in uh, in, uh, in the database. And of course. Uh, the owner of a casino can connect through a web server and uh, check the status of games and see how many drinks have been distributed. And he has, uh, he gets also alerts if an important VIP customer gets in, so that he gets better service and so on. 
So there is SMS alerts, there are SMS alerts and email alerts and uh, other, let's say, application, other features. Uh, okay. As you can see, the architecture is quite similar as in the first case. Uh, we are not, we don't have a web service running on embedded platform here, but he we have these data collection modules where we had to do some embedded programming and synchronize their output uh, with uh, with Rails web web server. And for for this, uh, we are using just TCP IP communication. I think it's a message queue, and we are using now we are moving to message queue uh, implementation. And uh, the last, let's say, non-standard application or usage of Ruby, and now it will be only Ruby and not so much Ruby on Rails. We are in uh, biometrics, very often people are enrolled by their fingerprints, and then we have to generate a card, we have to print the card for them, and we will put their fingerprint templates on the card. Uh, of course, uh, our customers, uh, sometimes they are integrators and they can do it on their own, but sometimes they ask us, okay, can you just print the card for us? And we told them, yes, we, we can, of course. And uh, then we found out that it's not so easy to, to find Linux drivers for this device, but we found that there were some and we have been debugging their drivers. And uh, so you got an advice to work in, in a... a you, you got an advice not to work in Windows environment, but an advice I would I will give you is to work in Windows environment if you have to deal with uh, specific or special hardware. If you have a hardware related task, uh, I think it's uh, not not worth to debug uh, drivers for Linux for uh, non-standard equipment. We are struggling with it quite a lot. Uh, Fingerprint scanners don't work very well under, under Linux. Uh, this card printer, it was, in theory, it was working out of the box, but in fact it was not. And uh, with other devices like signature pads, uh, web, webcams are quite okay. Uh, signature pads, not all of, some of them are causing restarts of uh, the computer. Some of them just don't work, so don't ask me why. Okay, what we did in this case, we did a, a light Ruby layer, which uh, is communicating, which is printing, uh, first it's printing some image, I think it's a PNG image, it's just printing it on the plastic card, and is this uh, service is also encoding uh, some digital content on the fingerprint template, the name, and so and other information on the card. Uh, once it's done, it has its own queue, and once, once the encoding is finished, it will acknowledge that the encoding is finished. It communicates with Ruby on Rails uh, yeah. application server, and this application server is uh, centralizing the data and, uh, and preparing the GUI for, for the customer. So basically this is it. Okay, so that's how we are using uh, Ruby on Rails and Ruby on uh, in non-standard environments. Thank you for your attention. Maybe if anybody has any questions? How do you update those devices? Oh, yeah. oh it, it, very good question. We. Typically, we have S an SSH connection, and we will be tunneling. We are creating uh, like big wire tunnels uh, to the device, and we, will, we are just uploading, basically in a very similar way how you would do it on a, on a standard PC platform. <laughs> Some, cust some customers don't want it, so they will just disable it. And then if we need to do a critical update for them, we will call them, they will switch on 
the SSL communication and we will update uh, their device. That's how we do it. What kind of problem? I mean, if it's crash. You can you you can restart the device. There is a crash. There is a button for the restart button. And you have it's kind of a sensitive amount. People couldn't get home or go to the door. It's not opening doors. It's more uh, it's more for time and attendance logs. So if for whatever reason it does not work, then you go home and in the morning you just tell to the administrator to put your log manually in, into the system. So it's not it's not such a critical device, so they don't call us in the middle of the night, okay? Our web service your web service is not working, so it's not critical, so some critical application. Um, you're using critical data and you're uploading that to Hero. Correct. Do you encrypt that stuff somehow again or uh, well we are using HTTPS for uploading. <laughs> Uh, no, we are creating a, a synchronization table and all the time we are writing to a database, we are creating, uh, um, there, there will be a hook and we are creating another, let's say, a serialized uh, representation of, of this insert or update. In, in one synchronization table, and we are just uh, pushing uh, through a special service continuously the content of this uh, synchronization table. But uh, the content is not especially encrypted again. Well, it's a YAML file, and then we will zip it, and maybe we will just store it with something. Or I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure about those details. Okay. Thanks. So why did you choose uh, Ruby and Ruby on Rails for Ability Devices? <laughs> well, why we, we have chosen Ruby on Rails for Embedded Devices is a good question. At the beginning we didn't work with Embedded Devices. We have created uh, our application and then we wanted to move to Embedded Devices. So we did. But it was not, let's say, it was not uh, uh, a choice we didn't know enough at the beginning, so we just did it, and then we have been finding out what were the issues. So it was not a very... I don't say it was not a reasonable choice, because it gives us uh, quite interesting advantages against the competition, because we are it's quite a unique solution, which has its own problems, but also a lot of benefits. <laughs> well, uh, I can't. I can't tell. It, it really depends. If uh, okay, we are working on embedded platform, but it's still quite high end embedded. So, if and uh, these days uh, the world is moving, embedded platform become, is becoming more and more powerful. So I think it will be a good choice maybe in one or two years because our application will be much more powerful than other uh, application written in C or C++ which is not so modular and not so scalable and so on. But maybe for really low-end embedded programming it's not, uh, it's not so good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.